Hi, my name is Stephanie Krieger and I'm a Microsoft Office MVP. In this video, I'm going to be demonstrating tasks from the article titled Using VBA to Access Document Content in the 2007 Office System. And you can find that article on the MSDN Office Developer Center. Well, that article introduces different ways to access document content through VBA in Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. But for this demo, I'm going to focus mainly in Word just to be able to show you more in less time. So let's jump over to Word and get started right now. If you started using VBA by recording macros, then like me, when you started writing macros, you probably always told VBA to select the content that you wanted it to act on, such as by using the selection object in Word as the macro recorder does. Well, for the purpose of this demo, I'm going to assume that you're watching this because you already know that approach requires you to write more code and take more steps than you probably need. If not, check out the article referenced at the start of this demo for an example of how much more work is involved when you always act on the selection, as well as the type of complications that can arise. Now, you're going to run into cases in VBA, of course, when you have to act on the selection, or even when doing so is your best option. But for the most part, you can usually save time, make your code more efficient, even get better results when you tell VBA what content to act on, rather than making the code go through the motions of selecting the content first. So let's look at a few different ways to specify the content you need. Well, the first option for doing this that we're going to look at is probably the one you'll use most often. That's returning an object from a collection. So in this sample document, I want to add text to the header just for the second section. If you record that macro or you write a macro that acts on the selection, you're going to need to take the steps I just did to open the header footer layer and go to the header you need before acting on the text, right? What's more, the result when you run that macro won't even be what you expect. You can learn more about that in the referenced article. But instead, let's just keep it simple. We'll close this header and we're going to jump into the VB editor, Alt F11 to access the VB editor, and let's look at the macro for telling VBA what header I want to act on. So for this macro, I've specified that for the active document, I want to look at the sections collection object and specify the second object in that collection, which is the second section in the document. Well, then for the collection of headers in that section, I want to specify the primary header. So notice that I'm more specific here than I could be by selecting the object, and I don't have to worry about variables like whether or not the section has different first page or different odd and even headers enabled. Now one quick aside, to use this code in practice, you'd probably want to add a step prior to what you see on screen to make sure that the active view isn't full screen reading view. That's because you can't edit headers and footers programmatically from that view. You can see how to do that in the referenced article. For now, let's take a bit more of a look at the code that's right here. So after we turn off same as previous, notice that we add the text in the range of this header. Well, why do we need range here? When you're not acting on a selection, you can do a lot by specifying the range to act upon. For Word, using range generally refers to the area within the specified object. So for example, if I look for members of the header object, I don't find options for adding or formatting content. That's because you can't do that to the header. You can, however, do that to the range or the area that is within the header. So if you're specifying an object to act upon and you don't see the members of the object you need, always check to see if range is available. And you're probably likely to find exactly what you're looking for. Well, using range can also change the action even if what you want appears to be available directly from the object without adding range. For example, let's take a look at the document again and notice that if I scroll down here, I've got a bookmark that's surrounding this heading to text. Well, let's jump into the immediate window and try a couple of things with that bookmark. So if I say, for example, for the active document, I'm going to go to the first bookmark, that is the first bookmark in the document, and I just want to delete it. Okay? If I press Enter from here, go back to the document, notice that the text heading 2 is still there, but the bookmark is gone, right? Well, let's undo that and put the bookmark back so we can try something else. Now instead, back in the immediate window, Let's say in the active document for the first bookmark, I want to delete the range of that bookmark. Press enter and what's going to happen? Well, the bookmark's gone, so is the heading to text because that was the content within the range of that bookmark. So what seems like a very small difference, very big difference in the result.
Now, the term range is used somewhat differently in VBA for different programs. In the referenced article for this demo, you can learn about using the range in Excel VBA to refer to a worksheet range, just like you do in the Excel UI, where you can name a range or reference a cell range. In PowerPoint VBA, you have objects such as the slide range, the shape range, and the text range. But the last thing we're going to look at in this demo before you get there is how to be as specific as you need to be in the given instance. Well, let's go back and take a look at that macro that we were looking at earlier, and we acted on the active document object, right? But what if several documents are open? How can you be sure that the document you want to act on is the one that has the current focus? Well, you get more specific. In Word, you return the document that you want from the documents collection object, or rather, the collection of currently open documents. So that is documents, open parentheses, and I can say documents 1, for example, that's going to be the most recently open document is documents 1. Or if you want to specify a document by name, such as the document that we were just looking at, you can do that as well. Now, note that anytime you can specify a name, as with the document here, or use a constant, such as with the specified header, you can always use an index number as well. Also note that Excel uses the workbooks collection and PowerPoint uses the presentations collection in the same way that Word uses the documents collection. The one difference is that the index counts in the opposite direction in Word from what it does in Excel and PowerPoint. In Excel and PowerPoint, workbooks one or presentations one refers to the workbook or presentation that's been open the longest as opposed to documents one which is the most recently opened or created document. Well you can find more examples for accessing content in Excel and PowerPoint in the referenced article so you know what let's go ahead and take a look at that URL right now. As mentioned earlier you can find this article on the MSDN Office Developer Center and if you don't already know that site here's the URL. Such an amazing array of resources there definitely check it out if you haven't already and if you want to jump straight to this article for right now you can see the direct URL on this slide as well. So hope you've enjoyed this demo thanks for joining me and see you next time.